Aaron at Power Popaholic, and I am talking to Van Duren, singer-songwriter, who uh, is the subject of a new film out by two Australians, Greg Carey and Wade Johnson, called Waiting, the Van Duren Story. He's also produced a lot of music. Not enough people have heard, honestly. Um, so, Van, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, thanks. Great. Um, this movie is a big deal to me because I've been actually a fan of your music for a long time, even though it's been very hard for me to track down some of this stuff. Let's go back to the beginning, uh, before your, you know, your first solo album, which was Are You Serious, and get back into, you know, the Memphis scene and, uh, how you were involved with Big Star. I, I heard you, auditioned for Big Star, but didn't quite make the band, but you were able to be around that whole orbit in, uh, you know, at uh, Ardent Records, and at, can you describe your audition for Big Star? Well, it was uh, sort of a, a long shot in the first place. At the time, I'd been a, a bass player for a number of years, and I'd also been friends with uh, Jody Stevens for quite a while, and uh, he had the idea of uh, bringing me into Big Star as a fourth member to play lead guitar and sing. I think he was more interested in the singing and uh, songwriting aspect of it. But, you know, I came in and auditioned at Ardent, and uh, it really, the chemistry was not there between Alex and I. Uh, he They were working on third at the time, and uh, I was uh, completely unaware of that material and, uh, you know, pretty much... Uh, uh, had prepared material from their first two albums, which I just loved. Um, not a lead guitar player, so it, it, there were a lot of things working against uh, uh, that ever really uh, coming to fruition, you know. Right, right. Um, by the time you've gotten past that audition, though, you did end up making contacts with some of the people, you know, who helped produce and, and work around Big Star. And, and did that lead to Are You Serious, the your first album? Well, the audition was in 74, and uh, directly after that, I connected with Chris Bell, also through Jody. And eventually, in late 75, early 76, uh, Chris and Jody and I formed a band, uh, and we played in Memphis for about uh, six months, first half of 1976. Then a year later is when I uh, left Memphis and moved to uh, the city, uh, Greenwich Village, and started working on the first album, Are You Serious, of Connecticut. So th that first group with Chris Bell, was that the Baker Street Regulars? That's correct. Now, any recordings of the Baker Street Regulars? No, we just played live. You just played live at the time. So, um, yeah. okay, so you produced this, what I think is a classic album, Are You Serious? An amazing, pivotal album. Do you feel, how do you feel about the record now? Do you think it was overlooked at the time? Were, they, were there problems getting your name out there at that time um, that sort of prevented things from sort of moving to the next level? Well, you know, it, it, there's a lot of levels to that question. Um, uh, I was actually surprised that I was able to go and do that record in the first place and, and uh, get it finished because of uh, severe lack of finances on my part. Um, and, uh, you know, it was the first time that anyone in my career had had that much uh, confidence in me as an artist to give me the studio time, front me the studio time, I should say, and actually get a record done and get it uh, released. So I was really, every every level of it that happened was really kind of a, a, a bonus, a little surprise to me because I didn't have high expectations on what would happen after we actually made the, made the recording. Uh, it actually did uh, gain, some, gain some level of Notoriety because they worked, uh, the, the record company worked phones for weeks and weeks and weeks around the country. They had distribution all over the country and uh, they actually ended up getting uh, airplay on 110 FM stations around the United States. Great. So, so you did get some uh, promotion from the label at the time out of it. And, and uh, you know, are, are you uh, proud of that record? Uh, you should be. But, um, you know, after all this time, uh, it, it took a while for the follow up to happen, which was uh, called Idiot Optimism. And, and from what I understand, it was only released in Japan for a while. And, then, and, and to be honest, 
a lot of your material, even your more recent material from 2008, is pretty hard to find. Uh, is it just the record company situation, or is there something else going on? Well, you know, there's a lot in between uh, the first album and, and today. Um, you know, this this soundtrack album that's just come out for the film is, is album number 13 for me. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the second album, Idiot Optimism, was recorded in 78, 79, right after we toured in support of uh, Are You Serious? Uh, and we worked on it for at the same studio for about 13 or 14 months, finished it, mixed it, and then uh, due to a falling out with the label, and the studio, I uh, had to walk away, and so the, that album didn't come out until it was planned for 1980. It came out in 2000 in Japan. Right, right. Is, is there any plans on, you know, gathering some of the music that you produced after uh, Are You Serious, including that album, because that album's out of print now, um, and basically trying to re-release any of this? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I can't really uh, talk about any specifics because nothing is has been uh, uh, signed or a uh, deal hasn't been made yet, uh, to my knowledge, but uh, uh, th there are definitely plans to reissue both of those albums and probably subsequent albums down the road, too. Great. Well, that, that just that alone is music to my ears because I can't wait to, uh, you know, get a fan's reaction to all this wonderful music that sort of came out at the time. You know, not a lot of it was, I think, promoted properly, and I think a lot of it also sort of fell under the radar, some of the really great stuff that you've done. Now that we have this movie coming out, it basically uh, brings a lot of this to the surface. It, it's another way to say, hey, remember Van Doren? Um, look at how talented this guy is, and he's really had some wonderful stuff. I haven't seen the movie yet, but what did you think of the movie? And tell me a little bit about how you actually got to meet uh, with uh, Wade and uh, Greg and basically put this movie together. Well, uh, Wade Jackson uh, contacted me uh, about not quite three years ago and uh, started communicating with me. And then shortly thereafter, his uh, cohort, uh, Greg Carey, jumped in too. Uh, Greg's in uh, music management in Australia, and uh, Wade is a singer-songwriter, recording artist, a uh, very talented one. Um, and uh, it took a while for them to gain my trust, because after decades of uh, uh, broken promises and, and dead ends, uh, I was really wary, and uh, I still am, but uh, exactly so. But, you know, one thing led to another. They said they were going to do a film, and I said, okay, well, that sounds great, but I didn't really believe them, and... You know, it took a, quite a while, and they ended up here about, I don't know, five or six months later in the United States filming and so on. And then uh, within the last year, it actually was decided that it really was going to be finished and put out there. So it was, a, it was kind of a bit of a journey. Um, uh, and it's their film, uh, you know, I must emphasize it's their film. I had some input, and I helped them with material and photographs and things like that. But uh, it's their vision and their film, so I don't want to take any credit for that. Uh, but I was completely blown away the first time I saw it. I was really surprised uh, because I didn't really, uh, I mean, they did a lot of interviews when they were in the United States. I didn't see or hear a single one of them except the one they did with me. So right. um, uh, it didn't ask to, you know. So, I mean, it was there were a lot of, a lot of surprises in there. And I think it, it tells the story of uh, on a lot of different levels, you know, uh, perseverance and, and family and loss. And, uh, you know, it's just a... Uh, uh, I think it's really well done, you know. Great. Great. Well, we, we look forward to that movie on wider release, hopefully this year. We'll follow up with that. But uh, since I have you on the line here, let's talk about some of the people who you interacted with in Memphis in the Ardent Universe. And, and let me get your thoughts on a few people. I'll just name some names. So, um, John Fry. John Fry was a genius. Uh, I didn't know him really well. I knew him a long time, um, since 1974 or so, uh, when I walked into Arden to uh, audition for Big Star. He was absolutely brilliant and uh, was, and also at the same time was the heart of that whole studio and that label and everything that was going on for the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, you know, up until he passed in uh, 2014. Right. Uh, I can't say enough uh, good things about Mr. Fry. He was 
just wonderful. Oh, excellent. Okay, so uh, John Tiven. John Tiven. Well, John and I were friends for a couple of years uh, in the 70s when we um, connected and uh, just through some demos that Jody and I did at Ardent. And uh, John was our uh, invitation to Andrew Oldham. And uh, John was also a principal in the record company, Big Sound Records, when it was formed in early 77. And he was the guy who reached out to me and said, hey, if you can if you can make it to the Northeast, we'll put you up and, and cut a record on you. So uh, that that's all on the plus side. Uh, since then, you know, John left uh, the label after the falling out with them uh, about a, more than a year before I did. And uh, he had his differences with them. None of them involved me. But... Uh, uh, you know, I don't. I, I think I wish John well. Um, I, I, I know that he's done a lot of work and a lot of projects in the decades since. And uh, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I kind of don't want to say too much because I, I'm just uh, we're not we're not friends really. But yeah. uh, I respect him for what he's done. Okay, great. Uh, what about Tommy Hohen? Tommy was a joy. He was. Uh, I knew Tommy for a long time, but only. In the late uh, 1990s, did we actually work together? We did two albums together. At really? Oh wow! And, yeah, and they're phenomenal. I mean, uh, they're out of print now. Well, actually, the second one called Blue Orange is still. See, these are still available. There's a few left that I have, and you can find them online. Uh, but I think this is some of the best work I've ever done. Uh, and uh, he was a joy to work with. Really, super talented, and and just as sweet as you would think he'd be. I mean, just. A sweetheart of a guy, cool. you know, very, very, uh, just, just a brilliant, brilliant uh, uh, writer and, and singer. You know? What about uh, Jody Stevens? Well, Jody and I go back to when I was sixteen and he was seventeen, so uh, you know, uh, uh, nineteen seventy. So uh, I've known him a very long time, and uh, we've always uh, been good friends. You know, our paths don't cross as often as some of my friends and I do, but uh, you know, it's always like. You know, if uh, six months goes by, hypothetically, and we haven't seen each other, it's always, you know, when we see each other, it's always just like it was just yesterday. So he's a good friend and, and a very, very talented guy. One of the best drummers I've ever heard in my life. Cool. Cool. So, you know what? I just wanted to end off. I mean, one of the things that I saw that I promoted recently, Alex Green had an article in Memphis Magazine just recently um, yeah. about... Uh, the power pop movement in Memphis and how it got started and, and where everything was. And I wanted to know if you knew any of the other players in the in the field, like Robert Johnson, who was on the Hot Dogs, or Richard Orange. Uh, well, yeah, I knew the guys in Cider Sea. Um, uh, uh, I knew Richard. Uh, Richard and actually briefly joined my band, uh, Good Question, back in 84. For about two or three weeks, it didn't work out, but we're, we're acquainted. I haven't seen him in a really long time. He's an incredibly talented guy, great songwriter. Cider Z was a wonderful band. I mean, they were as against the grain as Big Star and, and my bands and everything else going on in the mid-70s here in Memphis, you know. But it was a beautiful thing. And uh, uh, Robert Johnson, uh, I, I've met Butch a, a few times over the decades, and uh, I don't think we've ever had a long conversation, but he's certainly made a name for himself uh uh, in England and then uh, the United States uh, over the years and put out some records and played with some great people. So he's a talented guy. Cool. Uh, the Hot Dogs, uh, Greg Redding was one of the principals in the Hot Dog. Yes. And he uh, was a friend and he actually, he and I and two other guys put together a band called Good Question in 1982 after I came back to Memphis from the Northeast after the experience of the whole uh, first two records and all that. And Greg uh, is still playing, and he's an amazing musician, uh, guitarist, and uh, Hammond organ player. Like, unbelievable. Great singer and songwriter. And he's still playing, and he's a, he's a good friend, too. Very talented. Very cool. Well, we are looking forward, obviously, to this movie. And I look forward to uh, any new recordings that you are doing as well. Are, are you working on anything in particular currently? Well, yeah, we have uh, a number of projects uh, ahead of us. Uh, the reissues will probably come first uh, in some form. Uh, we're talking about a number of things. You know, I've, I've been working with, for the last six or seven years with uh, the singer-songwriter Vicki Loveland here in uh, Memphis. Yes. And uh, she and I have done two albums and two singles together, and 
We have another, a third one that we're planning to do. Uh, and Wade and Greg have asked for um, a new Van Duren album at some point. Uh, and um, but hopefully a Vicky Loveland solo album. So we have three different projects that are on the, bar, on the back burner. Uh, she and I have been writing songs for a while, new songs, and I've also been writing new songs. So uh, the writing comes first, and when we have a, I work best with a deadline. So when we have a one project lined up, and we'll get it done. You know? That's excellent. I reviewed the the Loveland, I think the first Loveland Dur Duran album, and it was great. And uh, I look forward to more of your music. And I would like to thank you so much for your time and, you know, and everything. And I wish you well and continued uh, work and success. And hopefully this movie will get your name out even more to the country and it'll help boost sales of those reissues. And um, thank you very much, Van Doren. Thank you, Aaron. I appreciate it very much. And we'll see you in New York at some point. I hope so. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. All right, bye.